Voilà, bonsoir. Good evening. Welcome to all of you. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, we are very looking forward to hear the architect Kengo Kuma, uh, who uh, just arrived from Japan. And we are, it's a big honor to have you, Mr. Kuma, for a lecture, and also on this campus to welcome you as uh, the architect who designed uh, the project Under One Roof to be built just a few meters behind us. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much for being with us tonight. Mm -hmm. Just... Uh, <laughs> ah, thank you. Avant de commencer, juste une petite précision. Donc la, la conférence sera en anglais, mais il y a une traduction simultanée qui est faite. Et euh, si, vous avez, si vous voulez profiter de cette euh, traduction, vous pouvez prendre euh, un, un casque. Il y en a encore quelques-uns disponibles ici et vous mettre sur le canal 1. Et j'en profite pour remercier la traductrice, Madame euh, Tatou, pour sa prestation ce soir. Merci. So, this is the annual conference of our partner, the UPIAV. Um, and this event is also part of the 150 years anniversary of the establishment of diplomatic relationship between Switzerland and Japan. So the Japanese, uh, arc, the Japanese embassy in Bern took the opportunity of uh, this uh, lecture to celebrate this very important anniversary that uh, will happen all uh, 2014. This is one of the first events and we are very proud to be part of it. Mm -hmm. As you can see, we are three to deliver a welcome address. So, Philippe Fogel, president of the UPIAV, Luc Meyer, who is leading the project Under One Roof, and myself, Cyril Veillon, I am director of Archizoom, the architecture museum on campus. So first, I will give the floor to Philippe Fogel, who will address you on behalf of the architects and civil engineers from UPIAV. Thank you. Mesdames et Messieurs, c'est une grande fierté de voir cette salle pleine pour la conférence de Kengo Kuma. Je ne suis que le secrétaire général de l'UPIAV. Je dois excuser notre président qui a eu quelques problèmes avec la grippe, qui ne peut pas être parmi nous. Euh, juste quelques mots pour présenter l'UPIAV, qui est l'union patronale des ingénieurs et architectes vaudois, et qui regroupe les principaux bureaux d'architectes et d'ingénieurs euh, du canton et qui s'occupe essentiellement d'une convention collective, de marchés publics, de problèmes d'honoraires, et qui tente, avec succès, euh, de mettre sur pied des conférences susceptibles d'intéresser les architectes, les ingénieurs et toutes les personnes intéressées par la construction. Et j'en profite pour remercier Cyril Veillon pour la fructueuse collaboration que nous avons pu mettre sur pied euh, avec euh, Archizoom, et qui nous permet euh, de vous proposer ces conférences. Well, a few words in English for our guest, Mr. Kengo Kuma. It's a great honor to receive you this evening and to be able to meet and to listen to a great architect and an architect who is going to build uh, something new just near from here, under one roof. Uh, I'm sure we'll have a very nice evening all together listening to you. And maybe a few questions at the end of the conference. And now I give uh, la parole to Cyril Veillon <laughs> to present you. Thank you very much. Good evening. Thank you. Merci, Philippe. Uh, so I will quickly introduce uh, our lecturer. So after graduating uh, in architecture from the University of Tokyo, Kengo Kuma moved to New York to continue his studies uh, at uh, Columbia University as a visiting scholar. After his return in Tokyo in 87, he founded first the Spatial Design Studio, and then in 1990, Kengo Kuma and Associates, a practice that uh, is based now in Tokyo and Paris and employs over 150 architects Uh, and they build intensively in Japan and abroad. So Kuma's work is really not easy to categorize. We usually say 
that uh, his goal is to, to, to recover the tradition of uh, Japanese buildings in, in the 21st century. And uh, his architecture, yes, relates to the Asian tradition a lot, using light and uh, natural materials to produce a kind of new transparency. It also achieves a new level of uh, lightness in construction. Lightness is a keyword of his work. And in, in that respect, Mr. Kuma, you have said that the research of lightness and thinness uh, is a common goal between you and Zana, the Japanese architect of this building, with, uh, with the difference that uh, Zana uses glass and metal and you uses uh, local material as much as you can. So, in my sense, there is uh, also another key word uh, to describe Kengo Kuma's architecture, which would be uh, provocative, or let's say critical, Indeed, in the contemporary economy of construction and uh, property development, bringing new construction systems and uh, using local material can sound like a, a real act of resistance. And also, Kengo Kuma uh, is a prolific writer and critic, already as a, a young postgraduate student when he was writing on the influences um, of Japanese contemporary architecture. He, and more recently, he wrote numerous books, among them the seminal text called Anti-Object, the Dissolution and Disintegration of Architecture. This book calls for an architecture of relations, respecting its surrounding instead of dominating it. So, because we are in a university, I also would like to mention Kengo Kuma's significant contribution to education and research. Since 2009, he is a professor at uh, Tokyo University. He took a chair previously occupied by Kengo Tange, Kenzo Tange sorry, and uh, Tada Wando. Uh, the very active Kuma Lab is uh, running research on architecture, urbanity, and uh, design and uh, giving opportunity to the students to, to participate, to take part in the research, and also building projects at one-to-one uh, -one scale. So Kengo Kuma pays a lot of attention to the origin of materials. He draws inspiration from the intelligence of the, the craft and uh, the vernacular. He looks carefully at traditional construction system, but this leads always to experimentation. In a way, Kengo Kuma is not a traditionalist. He's a real master in innovation. He doesn't hesitate to experiment in small projects, small buildings, and, as he says, expand this experiment into big buildings is always very difficult. But for us, the double track is very important. So, for us, is a perfect example of an academician who can, in parallel, be a great builder. So, dear Mr. Kuma, your career is a real inspiration for us. Uh, we, which better architects, our school, could have chosen to build the, the, to, to the future pavilion dedicated to art and science. We are really looking forward to see the building with our own eyes. Uh, but in the meantime, I will give the floor to Luc Meyer, who will talk about this future project. Thank you very much. Well, th thanks, thanks, Cyril, for this intro. And I'm glad to be able to join you and Mr. Fogel in welcoming Mr. Kuma back to our campus, where he's bound to make quite a mark with this upcoming Under One Roof project. Cyril, you've hinted as one of the distinguishing features in Kuma-san's architecture, the focus on erasing distinctions between the outside and inside of buildings, and of building disintegrated, pixelized walls that aim to signify interaction rather than separation. And indeed, there could be no architectural approach that's more suited to the programs we at EPFL aim to carry out in this future under one roof building. It's been the drive for this, of the school for a number of years now 
to do our part in removing the mostly imaginary walls between the cultures of the arts on one side and those of science and technology and engineering on the other. Both sometimes tend to keep each other at bay, with the arts often appearing as something that scientists can only have a relationship with maybe as a hobby time, as consumers, but have no active part in. And however, there's no denying that, um, in fact, technology has had a profound impact on contemporary art practices, uh, from data sets that are being turned into electronic music, to ever more tactile experiments into digital painting, and so forth. And that technology plays a role in also helping us further harness, understand, and tell the story of our common, more classical, cultural heritage to further generations. EPFL has probed this fertile ground between culture and technology in its research and educational capabilities, most notably perhaps with the opening of its Digital Humanities Laboratory last year in 2012. And this lab is currently at work bringing back to life a thousand years worth of history of the city of Venice through the mining of its archives. That's only one project where we put technology at the service of culture and of its further continuation. Some of our other research units here at EPFL, such as our Metamedia Center and our EPFL plus ECAL Lab joint venture, have wandered into the intersection between music and technology through their work on the archives of the Montreux Jazz Festival. And with this critical mass at hand, with all these projects going on, it was now time for us to move on to the next step and to provide our campus community and the larger outside audience with a large-scale lab to test these ideas in. And this is what Under One Roof will provide us with. Starting in probably 2016, Kumasan's design will provide us with a lively space to bring to life these Montreux Jazz Festival archives and to test further intersections of live performance in music and technology. It will also provide us with a pavilion that will display the best of our school's history of innovation, uh, presenting such grand projects, groundbreaking projects as the Blue Brain, Human Brain Project and others through innovative scenography. And finally, it will also provide us with an exhibition gallery that will be an experimental museum of sorts for the visual arts, where contemporary forms of art technology production uh, and themes will be presented along more classic cultural heritage that we aim to leverage differently by finding new ways of presenting it and interacting with it. And this thanks to the commitment of a number of partners, uh, key among which is the Fondation Gandur pour l'Art, based in Geneva, uh, whom we are glad to have with us on this project and whom we are honored to have represented in the audience tonight. Um, Kumasan's architectural project provides us with the perfect space for these adventures. It is sturdy but airy, open, inviting, and permeable to outside influences. And as Cyril put it earlier, it's innovative with a smart respect for tradition. And this is exactly what we were looking for. Kengo Kuma, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> yeah, thank you very much. <clears throat> thank you very much. This works? You think it's working? Yes. 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 Okay. okay. And today, as, a, as a, I want to as a think with you about as what is the power of place and what is the, uh, after as a the disasters, you know, so in Japan, we had a big disaster, a big catastrophe three years ago, as March 11. The, I have been thinking about what is the strongness of the place. Because the, I want to start from the, this image. The, <coughs> uh, the, 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 this is the, the image of Shinomaki City. So, so this city was the most devastated place by the earth tsunami and uh, I, t I took the pictures by myself so two weeks after disaster I went to the city and, was, and, uh, and I was so shocked to see the, the, that the scenery the, the, what I found there is the concrete building in 20th century was not strong enough in front of the the surprising the power of nature and uh, but but at the same time so I found that some small wooden buildings so were not destroyed so because the people of that region that area so, so knows what is the strongness of nature 
So I took this image from the small hill, and they know the, the hill is, is very safe in front of tsunami, and historically, they didn't build the building in front, in front of the ocean. They only built the building is on the small hill. That is their wisdom, and that they know very well about what is the real strongness in front of the, the amazing power of nature. And uh, the reason why I went there is I designed that building in that place, in that city, as the Kitakami Canal Museum. And uh, I think we have better the, the, the drop the light, so dark, make it darker. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, great. Good. So, so it, it, as a, it is difficult to find a building <laughs> because I want to as a, as a delete the building in, in, the, in that kind of landscape. This is my museum I designed in 1999. So, this is the museum I designed there. And the one third of the building is on the, the land, and one thir two thirds of the building is underground. So for that building, so I, I thought, what should be the relationship with the environment? And uh, as, uh, about the strongness of architecture, the most critical issue is relationship with the environment. So if I, if the, as I want to, as a overcome environment, it is really impossible. But if we want to create the harmony with the environment, so we can create the real strongness of the building. And for that project, so fortunately, this building was not destroyed by tsunami. So because of, as, but the main reason is not our design, the main reason is the location. This is Kitakami River, this is Kitakami Canal, as so my building is like the tunnel as a, in the bank. It is a plan. So this is a, as a space for exhibition, and this is a space for machine. As a, actually, the, this is a, as a water gate. As a, the, this machine is controlling this water gate. And uh, this is a section of this building. This is Kitakami River. This is Ishinomaki City. And the building is between city and river. And this is the entrance of the building. And, uh, and uh, actually, it is difficult to find the entrance. <laughs> and uh, sometimes a uh, taxi, taxi driver uh, can't find the entrance. So. <laughs> and uh, and uh, tsunami is, uh, is, was reaching up to this place. And because of the one-meter gap, so this building was saved. But, as, but the, as a, when I saw the, as a, the news on TV, as a, I was so shocked because uh, the TV is, was reporting as a, most of the city was destroyed. But, as a, as a, but luckily, this building was not destroyed because of the one meter gap. As a, the main idea for this building is building should be the gate, the flame in front of nature. If nature is beautiful, the building is a, is a, is a, can be the, is a simple flame, the minimal flame, which pick up the beauty of nature. That is the main, is the main idea of this building. This is the bottom of the building. And the, 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 this shows the mystical idea. It's a frame. And uh, you see the big uh, the grass, so which is, is uh, separate exterior and interior. And there's also the, this furniture is, is in between exterior and interior. Well, so this half is interior, and this half is uh, exterior, outdoor. And uh, this is uh, uh, the, uh, the beautiful evening of that building. But when I visited there, the two weeks after earthquake, the landscape was very different. That side was destroyed by tsunami. 
So if the river is like has that curve, one side was destroyed, and our side was not destroyed. We are just so very fortunate. And also the rebel of the, the waters raised one meter. And do you know do you know the reason why the water raised one meter? Because the land of the city dropped one meter. All the way. I couldn't believe it. The, the, all the land was the, the, the dropped one meter, and it slid four or five meters. As a, as, a, as a power of nature is really, really amazing. As, a, as a comparing with that, the, as a, as the power of humans is very, very weak. That is our the finding from, from tsunami. And this is a view from river. And the next project is also we built in Tohoku area, up north area. And, the, the, and the, again, this building was not destroyed by tsunami. The, but it's, that I, the building is very similar to EPFL building we are designing, the one, under one big roof. And the roof is very important for us because the roof is a as a, as a can help us to make the harmony between as ground and the building. And, as a, and also for that building, so to use local material is very important. And the, to use local material is also helping us to make harmony between place and the building. And in that case, we use the wood as, a, as a, for this case, a cedar, the from the mountain behind, and that as a, Japanese carpenters are saying, to use local material yeah, is a, the best decision for the building, as because the humidity and temperature is, are constant, and so, and so also for that building, I want to talk about the void under the roof. This is a void under the roof. This is a void. And this is the, the, the layout of the building. This, this is, a, is a typical structure of Japanese village in the countryside. This is the center of the village, and this is the main street, and this is the mountain. And that, and as always, the city center is, is sitting just as a, besides the mountain edge. And that the relationship is very important. And uh, because the life of the people is, was totally, uh, the, uh, totally relied on the natural resources of the mountain. As a, as a priest remembers the lifestyle before 19th century, the, <clears throat> the material came from the mountain. The wood and the papers and the, the anything that came from the mountain. And the, the energy also came from the, or came, coming from the mountain. And then the, in, before 19th century, we didn't have electric company, we didn't have gas companies. All the energy came from the mountain. And also the agriculture, the mountain, was very, very necessary. Because fertilizer came from the mountain, came from the leaf of the wood. And without the mountain, they couldn't do farming, they couldn't do agriculture. And, the, and then they built shrine. Here. This is a typical position of the shrine in Japan, edge of the mountain. Because it's a strong message. If the, we lose the mountain, we lose everything. This is a message of the shrine, from the shrine. And then the, the people the, uh, the were keeping the natural resources of the mountain very, very carefully. The, and then the, the, the forests of the mountains 
were kept in the belly as a as a as a as a belly as a perfect situation, perfect condition. But however, in 20th century, so they forget the mount, they forgot the mountain. In 20th century, most important resources for the people it was Tokyo. Because energy came from Tokyo, the material came from the Tokyo, information came from Tokyo, everything came from Tokyo. And they forgot the mountain, they abandoned the mountain. And then in that village, the shrine was also abandoned. It is, I think it is a very, very sad situation for us. So, because the, the, the mountain is the basis of our life. The, the basis of our cultures, but we abandoned that is the most important is the, is the, is the issue of our life. And the, the, our museum is, is sitting here. And, and my, the message from this museum is please respect the mountain again. Please respect nature again. That is very important. And then as that this museum is facing the mountain. As a, that, the name of that mountain is, is, is that we call it that mountain Satoyama, and the meaning of the Satoyama is a village mountain. And, uh, but, the, the, but the story was the mayor of that the village, the, he, he, is a, as a, he was against my idea. He said, parking is here. The priest have the entrance in front of the parking. And I said, no, 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 no. This is an American lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> the Japanese lifestyle, the entrance should be the mountain. And, uh, but finally, I, I, we could persuade him to have the entrance here. And that also, finally, we could have the void the, to, sepa, the, to the connect sit, the village and the mountain. The connection is very, very important for our life. And under one, one roof, we can have the void, so we can have the connection between nature and life. And this is a connection. This is a void, so we propose for this building. And the entrance is facing mountain. And the, the, the total the, the silhouette of the building is very simple. And the one simple roof with the local materials. The materials so came from the mountain. And this is a space between mountain and the building. And the, the, those eaves are controlling natural light. And the, those eaves the, can give the, the, the kind of harmony between the nature and the space. And the, also the, this uh, the wooden slat the, the can save energy of the building, the which as a control natural light the, for the building, and as actually we could as a, uh, the drop the as energy consumption by the use of those the, the, the wooden slat on the roof, and the, most of the material for this interior came from the mountain. The rice papers, and the dislocal stones, and the, the, those wood, all came from the mountain. And also the, we worked with local craftsmen. The, historically, the, in every village, we have the local craftsmen. Rice paper craftsmen, as the carpenters, and the presser workers, and the as, as stone, as the, as the artisans, the, but in 20th century, as a, they were disappearing because of Tokyo. As a, and behind Tokyo, so there is a big industry from America, and the, then the, the Japanese local artisanship the, as a, was destroyed by Tokyo in 20th century. It's a big, big problem. So I think the power of the place that came from the collaboration with the craftsmen how the place came from the use of local material. And if we can work with them, so we can make local 
economy strong, as a stronger, so we can make local cultures much stronger. As a, but if we as a, import everything from the city, so we lose everything. As, uh, and also, the, I like the beauty of local material, the rice papers, local stones, uh, and, uh, and the, the, those is wood. And as a, for the design method, so what we use for this building is a super juxtaposition. The layers, 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 are super juxtaposed. It's a, I think this is not the simple transparency. The, the those transparent element are juxtaposed the, by the use of screen technique. And the furniture is a is, is a part of that super juxtaposition. We design every furniture for this building. And the next project is the Adobe Museum. And the Adobe is not the name of the software, so the Adobe is the name of the material. This is um, Adobe. And uh, so when I visited this small village in the west of Japan, so I, I saw this building. And uh, I, I checked the, the detail of that building. And it is, is very different from, from the normal, the, the normal the, the warehouse, warehouse. Because the, this building the, the has, has, has no wooden structure. The, the soil block the made from the soil of the land was the only material for this building. And also the, in that village, I found this the soil wall. And usually in Japan, the soil wall is the wooden wall as a, with the a, a soil cladding. And this is a Japanese system. But in this village, <clears throat> they, they have a very, very unique tradition. They, they, they built everything by the use of the adobe technique. The, the adobe technique is the, the technique as a, as a made by the, the earth of the site. And but, in, as also in 20th century, they forgot that method. They abandoned that method. As I so found the, as a local craftsman, they can make, as a, they can, as a, they make this, this method. This is adobe block we designed for this project. The material is the site itself. And uh, that means that this is a very, very sustainable method because no transportation needed for this project. And also the adobe is different from normal brick. Normal brick, we need energy. We should burn the the soil. But for adobe technique, the, it's, it's just the, made by the energy of natural light. We just dry the soil the, under the sun. This is a very, very simple and very sustainable method. And uh, this is the content of this small museum. It's a 12th century wooden Buddha. The, and the, then another challenge for this building is we didn't have the air conditioning system for this building. So because the adobe block the can, can, can control humidity and the temperature. And this, is, this wooden Buddha is one of the national treasures of Japan. And usually, normally, so we need the perfect air conditioning system. But for this building, we didn't have air condition because the adobe, the material itself, can control the climate of the place. That is very important. This is a, as a, as a mat power of the material. In 20th century, we forgot that kind of power. As another as an example, this is, a not, this is not my building. This is a flank of life, <laughs> the building. For Japan, it's an imperial, imperial hotel that so he designed in 1923. And uh, the, he the, came to Japan, and he the, the asked the construction company to show every stone from Japan. 
and he picked up this, this, mat, this stone. This is a very soft volcanic stone. And the, the client of this hotel was very shocked to see, the, to see this stone because the client, the normal client of the, those, the luxurious hotel, they wanted to use the luxuri luxurious, gorgeous Italian marble or something. But what Frank Lloyd Wright selected for this building is a, is a kind of soft, normal, the dirty stones, uh, and people were, was, the, every people was, uh, were, was against his idea. But uh, the Frank Lloyd Wright never listened to what they said. <laughs> He's that kind of guy. And, uh, and, uh, and, and he said, I like his comment. So this kind of softness the, the, is fitting the Japanese climate, Japanese environment. And the softness and porousness is very necessary for Japanese climate. And he, underst he perfectly understands what is Japanese, what is Japanese environment. And also the, and the, he designed this hotel, uh, this, this ceramic tile for this building. Please look at the lines, scratch, she put on the, the, the brick. He also thought that the, 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 the small lines, the, the beautiful shadows by the lines, can fit Japanese environment. And also these stones so with holes the, 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 the creating beautiful shadows on the material. And the, he, he knows the, the importance of the shadows of Japan. As a priest, as a, as a remember as a Tanizaki's famous book, The Praise of Shadows. As a, as a shadow is also the, the importance of Japanese cultures. And, the, and also shadow the, can the create it, can be created by the, the section of the roof. And this is a building that I designed the very close from the quality of that stone. Frank Lloyd Wright used that stone for Imperial Hotel. And so I tried to create another kind of the porousness of the material, as another kind of shadow by the, uh, by the same material. As a, as a, but as a, our detail is a little bit different from Frank Lloyd Wright detail. So what I did for this stone is combine masonry structures with steel structures. It's a kind of composite structural system. In 20th century, the, the structural system is, is, is categorized clearly. Concrete structures, steel structures, masonry structures, but this is a composite. If so we can combine steel, steel plate with the stones, so we can go to the next step, I think. This is how to make this as a, as a, as a composite structures. The stone and the steel plate, stone, steel plate. As a, and uh, and it, as, a, as, a struck, as a calculation of this as a system is not so easy, but as a, we pick up the as a character of stone and character of the steel at the same time. And uh, this, he's our engineer. So he's, he checked by his foot. <laughs> and uh, and uh, this is the wall so we created for this building. So, so we, so this is a new part of the building. The layering of natural material the lightness of the natural material is a theme of that project. This is a new part of the building. Uh, the next materials I want to show you is the bamboo. Uh, the bamboo is also the, uh, the very common material in Japan. But to use bamboo for architecture is not easy because bamboo is a, is a yeah, uh, bamboo has cracks easily by, the, by the, the, the change of temperatures, by the change of humidity. And, the, and the, the me and the, our engineers the, uh, think together 
what is um, the, the, the new detail the, for bamboo? And our solution is to use bamboo for the framework of concrete. So this is a, not just, the bamboo is not the main structures. We put steel, the steel clamps, and the concrete into the bamboo. And the, it is not easy construction. The diameter of the bamboo is 15 centimeters. And the Japanese carpenters the erase the, the, those, the, uh, the, the node of bamboo, the dance. After that, we can the insert those materials into bamboo. For every project, so we are checking the mat material so by making those mock-ups. We compare the size, we compare the pitch, we compare the color. So by the use of those uh, real size mock up. Now this is our first bamboo house in Japan. And the please forget neighbors. This is, <laughs> this is the typical Japanese houses. And, and uh, for that house, I use bamboo, I try to use bamboo for every part of the building, for, including the floor. This is second floor. And then there's a so this is a two-story building, but the ground floors and the second floors, the communication is very easy. This is partition, this is a ceiling, this is rice paper. And the next, the second bamboo project is, happens in China. So this is Great Wall, and the, this is very close to Great Wall. And so, and the first the challenge for that building is this section. In 20th century, the people the, the always try to build something on the flat plain. And, the, and, they want, and then that means they cut everything. They cut the land. And they destroy the land. But for this project, I want to preserve the land as possible as can. And, and then the bottom of the building is following the landscape. And then we can the preserve the original vegetation of the place. <clears throat> and the second challenge is, of course, is the material. So in China, to, the bamboo is very easy, to, uh, very available, and very cheap material. And this is great wall. And this is another example of under one roof. And the one that under one roof, we designed this void. This is a void under one roof. And this kind of void is, void is very important for the, our design. The void is a communication space between nature and architecture. And as in, as in Japanese culture, as as, uh, even in music, void is very important. So between the note and note, so we have the void, we have the silence. And in Japanese poem, so we also know the importance of the void. Between words and words, we have the silence, we have the void. <clears throat> and this is a good example of the void. <clears throat> and this is the entrance, it's another void. And. Uh, here, so you can see the, the main void. And this is the main void of the space. And the people the, are using this space for drinking tea. And the, in Asian culture, drinking tea is also a very important experience. And in Chinese, the Olymp Beijing Olympic, the ninth, the, it's happened in 2008, the, the, the the advertising film for Olympics uh, 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 used that space. And then after that, the space became very popular in China. And the uh, next material is uh, finally the wood. So I designed a small pavilion in Milan, Italy. This is a temporary project. As, uh, I want to use the wood for this template project because wood is easy to transport 
and easy to build and e easy to uh, the break again. The, and, uh, and also, the, I want to the, the, the follow the traditional system of Japanese carpenter. And uh, this toy is called Chidori toy. And the Chidori means a thousand bird. The thousand bird, why it's called thousand bird? Because small elements are, 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 are creating the big whole, the big totality. That is the meaning of thousand bird. And the joint of those bars is very unique. And the three different joints as a, as a can, as a, can be fixed like that. And it, it's easy to fix. <laughs> and uh, so we as a, uh, as a brought those materials from Japan with those as a cut, cutting. And the dimension of this bar is just three centimeters. And that means here, so the, the, the smallest the part is just one centimeter. The, our students could build by themselves and without the, any help from the carpenter. And after that, the, uh, we can bring every material back to Japan. And after the project, the, my next step is to create the real permanent building by the use of the same system. In our Tokyo University level, we tested the strongness of this material. And uh, the, our solution is 10 meter building that can be built by, the, by, by this system. And this is the, the final the, the result. And uh, the dimension of the, those wood is very small. It is a six centimeters by six, six centimeters sections. And that means the connection of each unit is just two centimeters. And two centimeter sections are supporting the, that whole 10 meters building. It is, it's a kind of magic of Japanese the craftsmanship. Uh, this is a ceiling. So after the building, the next, so, so, uh, as always, I want to go to the step by steps as a uh, the development. As it's a wooden bridge, as a made by the similar wooden joint system. And the, this village. It's very far from Tokyo, and uh, they has, uh, have a very beautiful forest of cedar. And our idea is to make the, as a bridge, and uh, also the, we want to use the, this space for the museum, as another example of under one roof. This is the interior of the, 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 the bridge. As a, as a wooden bridge is a, often have the roof. But it's the same in Swiss. I saw some wooden bridge in Swiss has a beautiful roof because the wood is a, to have the protection by the roof. And this is another space in the bridge. <laughs> it is a, as a, uh, we use this space for the uh, Artists in residence, and this is uh, the here. So we have the space for artists in residence. Uh, this is the exhibition space. And uh, for this village, Yusuhara village, <coughs> we also designed a small hotel. It's called Malashe Yusuhara. As so here, there, so we found those small, beautiful the hut made by touch. As, a, as a, we want to use the same material, thatch. So, and the, because the, so also we have the same problem. The craftsmen, the, 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 
as of touch is, as, is disappearing. As I, I want to as a, give them the, the chance to as a, as a use their very special technique. And also, the touch is very good for uh, insulation of the as a climate, and also as a we as a give the new detail for such block. That those such block can rotate to introduce natural wind. And this is a very, very new detail. As always, we try to combine traditional material with the contemporary the, the technique. This is the inter interior, so you can see the, the detail of the touch. As a, this is a, as a, this is a space for as a market, vegetable market, and uh, the two, as a by the, by having those space, I want to stimulate the agriculture of the place, and it is also very important for the small village. In 20th century, the, the people as a, are importing vegetables from other countries, for example, China and America, so, and then the agriculture, local agricultures are disappearing in Japan. And, uh, but sometimes I'm working for America. <laughs> <laughs> so the Starbucks is a client for this project. The location is very unique. In front of the Tenmangu Shrine, is built 919, it's very, very old building. This is a shrine. So in front of the shrines, we have this approach. And this is, a, is the same as the Hiroshige Museum, the, the Satoyama, the village mountain, and the shrine, and the approach. So I want to show the Japanese as a, as a construction as a, as a technique as a, for for the American client. This is not the decoration. This is the structures of the building. And this is a joint, joint system. In the ZC Museum project, I, so, so we have the perpendicular system, 90 degree, 90 degree, but for this project, so I want to so, create some dynamic horizontal space by the use of this the 30 degrees joint system. And four sticks so, 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 so meet here, and there's a, have this, there's a special joint here. And, uh, and this is, is uh, not easy even for Japanese carpenters, but they so completed this building. And the total length of those sticks are 4,000 meters in that small building. This is, this is amazing as a, as a carpenter ship. And so uh, I'm going back to Tokyo, the so Asakusa Culture Tourist Information Center. And, uh, and those are, again, the location is very close from the traditional building. This Sensoji Temple is, is a very unique as a complex. A tower, the main building, and the, the gallery area, the, the kind of shopping street, and the gate of the, the temple. And our site is here. And so what I did for that project is the, to make the towers the, the, and the but the, the element of the towers is the, the small wooden houses. And the seven wooden houses are stacking to create 40 meters towers. That is my idea because the, if so we can have that kind of section, for each space, the people can feel, I'm sitting on the ground. I'm touching the ground. So that sense of the ground is very important for human. And also, the, the roof, the section, helps a lot to give that sense. 
And the, another good point for the loop section is to maximize the height and utilize those space from the machines. And the, as another the advantage of this roof section is controlling natural light by those eaves. And here we design a small theater by the use of those the slope. And here is the, the, the theaters, and here is a, the cafe on the top of the building. And the those space between the floor and the roof is, is used for the, the space of machines and mechanical. And this is a small theater. And this is the top floors of the building. As a, as a, again, as a, please look at the roof. The roof as a, can give us a, a special the sense of the uh, as humans, a human scale, and the sense of shelters are given by the, the roof section. And the, this is a new tower, the tallest tower in Tokyo, but I don't like that design. <laughs> because this is a typical as a design for industrial era, the, 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 the steel towers. As a, as a, this is not a tall building, it's just 40 meters building. But as, a, as, a, as we can make the contrast between steel towers and wooden towers. And the next project is a, is a city hall for the Nagaoka city. It's a Nagaoka city and Nagaoka station is a bullet train two hours the distance from Tokyo. So it's, a, it's a typical mid-sized mid city of Japan. And that means the center of the city so, so is facing as a, as a, some kind of the, uh, the, uh, the crisis. The, uh, the, the shops are not active, even in the main street. And the many the important buildings uh, escaped from the city centers. And uh, it's a kind of inner city problem. As the mayor of the city, the, did a big decision. He wanted to bring back the city hall to the city center. And uh, he believed as a, as a, by the use, as a, if as a, we can as a, as a design the beautiful public space, the city center as a, can be activated again. That is his idea. And the idea, I like that idea very much and I propose him this is a plan. This is a plan, so this is a DOMA space I suggested for him, and we combine the, some multiple function and the, to activate the people's life. And this is DOMA space. And the DOMA is a, is a, is a, is a space for the traditional farmer's house in Japan. Uh, the reason why I like that space is that is very close to the earth, and people can feel the earth, and people can do anything in that space under the roof. Uh, this is a kitchen, and the people are eating here, the people are drinking here, and there is a main public space in the house. And uh, I uh, use the same the vocabulary for this space. There's a material of the material the, the, is earth of the place. And the material for the exterior, and then this is a kind of interior, came from this the city. As a rule, we, as a set for this project, is most of the material should come the maximum 15 kilometers from the site. And then the those wood came from the 15 kilometer distance from the place. And I like the those cheap material. This is with knot and with skins and the very random. So I like that kind of character. If it, those materials are cut so clean, it is, it is anti-natural, anti I think. 
And uh, this is the main Doma space. And this is a city hall, this is a public building, but almost every day、uh, people are gathering to that space.、And、the kids are coming to that space to do homework, and the elderly people are coming to that space、uh, to eat something and to chat with the friends. And this is very different from the normal public building. It is another good example of the under one roof. The roof is controlling natural light, and that is very important. And we also designed those small shops, those small kiosks for this space. This is a, as a detail of the roof a photovoltaic panels, as, a natural, as automatically controlled. This is a big door which c o n n e c t Doma and Arena. And this is Space for NPO, non profit organization.、And、to bring non profit o r g a n i z a t i o n to the public building is very helpful to activate the city. And this is the assembly hall for the politician. It is facing the, the Doma space, it is very transparent. The, the transparency is very important for politicians and then. <laughs> We designed those doors. And uh, the, this the craftsman the, the produced the rice paper washi for us. The, he left rice paper in snow to make it whiter. And this is the rice paper he produced, very white. And this is a combination of earth and rice paper. And、uh, we designed those furniture s made by paper, rice paper. And these artisans, his farmers, are producing this beautiful fabric. This is a beautiful fabric he produced. And this is earth. And so this fabric is a, is a, can give the softness to the place. It is very different from the normal the, the, the product design of the 20th century. And this is our approach. Our approach is a, recently is a, is, has been adapted to the different context, Western context. It's a Besançon project, it's a cross from rivers, and the void again, the roof again, the local material again. And this is a so, so void which connects city and river. Artifact and nature is a, by the connection of the void. This is a void. This is an interface. The, the roof the can give the, the some the, as a integration between the building and the city. The Flat m a r s e i l l e is the second French project of us. So we found the special material from the place. The, and another void. So, we created for this project. The void is, the, as a, I found that people really want to have the void the, which c o n n e c t environment and the building. So, if the building has no void, the, the no relation happened, no integrations happened. And、the next project is the、uh, first project in Spain is that the Opel House in Granada. So we got a hint from, the, from these fruits. You know, the P- Granada name is,、uh, came from the, these fruits, pomegranate. And the structurally, it is very interesting. And also, the, 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 the relationship between small particles and the big hole is also very is interesting. So, and another hint. So、from Granada is this、uh, Alhambra Palace, has a special the hexagonal 
as a geometry. And there's a small, small particle and a big hole. And this is uh, the flues we designed for that city. The structurally, <coughs> we hinted, we got a hint from the, the fluids. And the hexagonal structure is very, very strong to support the building. And also is very helpful at, at the, to uh, the create the human scale for this big hole scale. The interiors, also people can see the structures of the building. And the next project is the uh, is, uh, Victoria and Albert Museum in Scotland. The, the hint is this. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, conversation between nature and uh, the water and the land. And the site is here. So again, the void and the small particles gives us the human scale to the big building. And the, the besides those bigger projects, the, I'm very much interested in doing small projects. The, the ceramic cloud is the, uh, the, the first realized project in Italy, in Reggio Emilia. This is a project. Material is ceramic tile. And the ceramic tile is also supporting the building. It's a structure. This is very, very as a different from normal way. In 20th century, the concrete structures were cladded by ceramic tile, and the ceramic tile was, was, was a kind of cosmetics on that structure. But in that project, the ceramic tile itself is, is the structures of the building. So it's an anal analysis of structure engineers and uh, this is the detail. The very thin stainless pipe, this is a vertical, and the ceramic tile is a horizontal element, so we need those two elements. And we want to create lightness by the use of natural material. And I think it's very it's similar to cloud. The, the clouds is a, is a the gathering the particles the can create a different the, the, the atmospheres by the use of a simple repetition of the material. And the next project in Italy is an umbrella project. Uh, if you can understand Japanese, you can understand my joke. The, the project, name of the project is Casa de Tutto, is a, is a ca, casa means a ha, house in Italian, but in Japanese, the meaning of casa is umbrella. And when I heard the Casa de Tutto, I immediately thought, ah, I should use umbrella for this project. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the, the 15 umbrella, the, can, the create this small pavilion. As if disaster happened, if tsunami happened, we, we, should, we should escape the bringing the, this umbrella. And uh, this is a very special umbrella. This, the, this triangular piece is, is the secret of this project. And if the 15th umbrella gather together, uh, can, can gather, so we decide to make the pavilion. This is the uh, completion of the, uh, the pavilion. This is the interior. And the structurally, this is very unique. As a, you, probably you know Buckminster Fuller Dome. The Fuller Dome, is a, he used the flame structure. But in this project, so we combine the, the comp completion of steel flame and 
as a tension of membrane. And there's, a, you know, the tensibility structures. This is a kind of tensibility structure. And then, so we can minimize the steel structures like that. Umbrella, normal umbrella can support this as a pavilion. And this is a secret of the triangular piece. And our, the, our 15 students they can build that pavilion by themselves, and they can stay night here as well after drinking. Uh, so this is a, a, another experimental small project in Hokkaido. It's in north of Japan. And in north of Japan, the, the, the ethnic minority, the called Ainu, the, were, were building that kind of house. The material is the leaves of bamboo. This is a system of the, that house. Even in summer, they were heating the ground. And the, the heating the ground is very important for the climate of this house. And the, this is our the experimental house. The material is, is, a, is very soft material. It's a membrane, it's a poly, polyethylene membrane, without any insulation. It's a double skin building. And air between is, is, is working as an insulation of, the, of, the, of that house. And, the, and also, the, we are heating the land by this, the, uh, by this chimney. And as, uh, because of that, the, the, the double membrane structures, so we can get natural light. And uh, this is a heating system of land. This is interior. This is nighttime view of the house. If, if, if in winter, Without any the normal insulation, so we can so stay night here. And the next project is a, is a water brick project. The hint is this, this poly tank, polyester tank. So usually it was used for construction. As the first prototype is similar to Lego block. As a, as a uniqueness of this system is controlling weight of unit by the use of water. As a, those three as, as a layer, as a three as a lines are, has water inside, and the upper side has no water. As the second version, so we designed for MoMA New York, has this section. And the good thing for this section is that we can have two bulbs for each edge of the block. And the water is flowing, and that means that we can control the temperatures of the wall and floors and ceiling by the use of heat, heated water. And in 20th century, the, so we have the structures, we have surface, we have the, uh, the mechanical, the, but in this building, the, those three the systems are integrated. And the, the, the structure itself is, the, can control temperature, and the structure itself is a, uh, is a finish of the building. And heat collector is outside, and hot water is created here, is circulating in the building. And the, again, our students are working together. And the, this is the structure of the roof. As every unit is connected like that. And, the, and this is the interior. This is bed. It's <laughs> a little bit small. And this is a kitchen. And, the, and the, the uniqueness of this project is only one unit can make everything. 
This is very different from the 20th century's production system. The, in 20th century's kitchen is kitchen, as a bed is bed, but in, for, for the body, so for human body, the, the system is not so complicated. One single the, the cell the can, the can become anything. As a, the model of this house is the body of life. The only exception is that, that the diameter, the, the, the diameter is producing electricity here. And the last project, of course, <laughs> this is an EPF project. As a, so we are here, as a, so we are designing one big roof with some void. As a, so, so I want to show the, uh, the importance of the roof, so because the roof is a, can is a, is a fix the building on the earth. So the roof is a, can create connection between ground and the building. And uh, this is a void between the volume. And uh, also so we are thinking about the new structure system. As a, as a, it's a kind of composite structure system with wood and metal. And uh, this is a gesture of, of the age of the roof, which create the another as a the, the conversation between ground and the building. And the, we are waiting for the completion. <laughs> and the, I, the, through those practice, I want to show the, the big potential of traditional vocabulary. And that I am not, the, the, as the, the introduction says, I am the, not the not so conservative. The, I always try to find the potential of the natural material by the combination of content, very contemporary technology. And the, always I want to the, pick up something from the place. And the, the place is, a, is very, very strong, I believe. The so architecture sometimes is not so strong enough in front of nature, but place is very strong, I believe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. This was a very complete and precise lecture, but if you don't mind, we can take some time for questions. Si quelqu'un a une question, il peut aussi la poser en, en français. On la, on la traduira. Il y a deux micros dans la salle. Est-ce que quelqu'un a une question If I, Maybe, maybe I, I just have a... We'll start with one question I have. Yes, with, yes. You started your conference by talking about the tsunami yes, yes. Uh, and you said in, in the abstract of the lecture you, you said that uh, this was a trauma moment uh, does this change your practice, it was this moment that changed your practice or your philosophy is more older than this uh, tsunami in, yeah, in, the, um, the actually the, 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 I, I, I'm, I, I'm, I was changing the the before tsunami, the 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 big the uh, triggers f f for my is for my experience is uh, the birth of bubble economy in Japan. The ninety the ninety one the the before nineteen ninety one the Japanese economy was, was very good, it is getting up and up. So, but nineteen ninety one so we experienced birth of bubble, and then suddenly the so most of the projects stopped. And the last decade, next, next, next decade, in the 1990s, the, 
as a, I had no project in Tokyo. Ten years, no project in Tokyo. And the dance, um, I traveled a lot to the countryside of Japan. And so I found the, the power of, of the, the, the each, play, each village, each place. I, I found the beauty of local material. So I found the, the wisdom of local craftsmen. And so they, are, so they could pre- produce beautiful the, the papers, beautiful wood, and, but the, they are disappearing. And then the, I, so in that decade, as a, I only as a, could design small, as a small project, but I as a, found the, the big potential of local, local, local materials, or local craftsmen. As a, as a tsunami as a push my push me more, <laughs> but it is but the beginning of the of that as a as a as a finding is started from 1991. So the economic, economic catastrophe. Crisis. Economic catastrophe is very important for Arctic, <laughs> very necessary for Arctic. Yeah, that's true. Thank you. The reason, yeah. Thank you very much for the beautiful talk. Uh, do you plan to use local materials or local craftsmanship for the pavilion which is going to be built here? Yes, yes, of course. As a, as a, the wood is one important material for that, and as a, and also the roof designs. I I was inspired by the uh, the the stone roof here. I had a Lausanne, name Lausanne, as a, as came from the. So the name of the stone? Uh, I learned <laughs> something tonight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't uh, know this. And, the, and then the, 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 the material for the roof is very important for the roof. The if the, the we can the, the get the sense of particle from the, the roof, the impression of the roof is, is, can be very soft and very human. The, the, <clears throat> it's a kind of the, uh, the, uh, the, the destiny of the life. The life. The, my friends, as a, as a philosophers, the, as a always thinking, always talking, the particles can give the sense of place for life. As if the the we lose the, the sense of particle, we lose the sense of place. And then the detail of the roof of the EPFL buildings uh, probably can give the sense of place. Yeah, thank you. But the stone roof in Switzerland comes more from the mountain. from the, So it's a bit more than 50 kilometers, but it's still <laughs> local. <laughs> There is a question up there. Um, où est le deuxième micro? Ah. Tout en haut, il y a une question. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the conference. Um, I'm, a student, I'm a student in the ECAR, and ECAR is uh, the art university in Lausanne. So I study in the master of the product design. So um, usually we design for the, like, uh, the highest tower in the Japan, like that. <laughs> but uh, um, maybe um, the architecture sometimes is uh, the choose for the furniture, for example, chair or something for your uh, architecture in space. So um, um, how, how to, I mean, so how to uh, choose for the, for example, chair for your uh, space? I mean, uh, um, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> my diploma project is maybe I try to do the furniture design. So, ah. 
Sometimes it's a furniture, it's a for the construction. For example, it's a stark chair, it's a the miss, uh, miss ghost or something, I forgot the name. It's a transparent chair. That is a lot of the, lot of the using in the uh, architecture space. I think that is a good uh, business. So mm -hmm. I would like to try to the, um, like a construction, uh, for the construction finder. And so if you, if you should, uh, if you uh, pick up for the furniture for your uh, space, how to pick up, what, what is the reason to pick up for the furniture? Yeah, yeah. The furniture design is very important for our practice. And uh, <clears throat> as, uh, if possible, I want to design the furniture for each project. So because the furniture is, is the interface between the, the body and the space. And, uh, and historically, the, the history of Japanese furniture designs are very interesting because in China, they are using furniture, normal furniture. They are sitting on the furniture chair. But in Japan, so we have been minimizing the furniture. The, the, and then the finally, so we only have the tatami and the sammat. The, the, it's a, it's a, it's a, Consequently, so we are so minimizing the, 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 the volume of furniture because the, the, our body the want to touch the space, touch the floor, and, uh, as direct as possible. As a, as a, but as a, the now, so in 21st century, is, uh, as our body uh, needs some furniture, but the, but the so we need is a new kind of de, uh, the relationship between the space and the, our new body. So, so. And then, so, as uh, I always is, is, uh, doing the, the study for furniture, but uh, still on the way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, one question. Hi. Thank you for your presentation. Um, in a world where construction really matters about the cost of materials, how hard is it to convince, say, a mayor to use alternative materials such as wood and rice paper? Mm. It's a good, very good question. <laughs> as a, as a, for every project, as a, as a, as a cost is, is very, very important, very critical for the design. But, uh, but, the, uh, but most of the projects, the, uh, the, I use the, the not inexpensive local material. For example, wood, the local wood is not so expensive in every place because it is a local. And, uh, and the, the, instead of using the as uh, expensive marble or expensive stones, so we are suggesting the, to use local material. And uh, and then the, the difference of the cost is very small, very limited. And uh, if the cost is not so different, so we can persuade the mayor. Because to work with local people, to work with a, as a, a local company, the the Makes the project the, uh, the, uh, the makes the project stronger than the normal project. The strong means a strong connection with the community. If so, we can uh, create a good the relationship with the community, the, the building can, the can be stronger than before. Uh, this is a, the definition of strongness for us. Thank you. Um, it's a small question. First of all, thank you for uh, for your uh, presentation. Um, I saw that in some projects, um, you somehow try to recreate or embrace the um, 
the nature, the space, uh, the space around, this exterior space on the outside. You try to somehow give some characteristics of the inside to that outside, or in your space inside, you try to recreate the atmosphere outside. Uh, for example, in this building that you're going to uh, build, <laughs> construct, uh, project, uh, you also speak of the roof and the void. Uh, about this void, um, I would like to think. I would like to, to know if you think about this uh, question when you do your project. Also, this uh, this building Rolex, uh, for example, when we are under the building under this big roof, we are outside, but we have this feeling of being protected, of, of being uh, in a, somehow in a shelter. Um, what do you have to say about this? This building, yeah. Uh, no, about this matter in your projects, in, um, about this feeling of uh, this somehow try to recreate this uh, fusion of uh, the outside and the inside, uh -huh. uh, protected outside, I would say. Yeah, as a, as a fusion of exterior and the as a interior <clears throat> uh, is, 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 is very necessary for human body, I think. So, as a, as a, as a, I want to explain, as I want to as a, as a, as a say about the impression of the, this building, EPF, as a, this is a Rolex center building. As a, for this building, the floor, floors is important. As a, as a flam, floor, as a floors is a, a, a melting exterior and interior, the merging exterior and interior. But so, our, for our building, the, the floor and the roof, the, especially the roof, is, is, is helps to as a, as a, as a march to the exterior and the interior. And uh, so there are many possibilities, many methods, how to combine exterior and interior. Uh, so another um, thing for, another advantage of the roof is the roof the, can the create the, the shadow between exterior and interior. And the, sh and the shadow is very important as a f for human body, but in 20th century, as a, the, mod the, the problem of modernist building is the, their, the, they uh, the, uh, lose the sh beauty of the shadow. As a, and as a, as a, I'm always as a carefully design the shadow between exterior and interior, and also the height of eaves is very critical. As a, if the the edge of the eave, edge of the roof is too high, as a, as a, we lose the the as a sense of as a sense of ground. The ground and the roof, if ground and the roof are too much separated, the, the we lose the sense of human for the building. Thank you. We can take one, maybe one last question. Yeah. Um, thank you very much. It's been very interesting. Um, so I guess what I'm interested in knowing about is, so in your buildings, your uh, showing this uh, very delicate sens sensitivity toward uh, the traditions of Japanese construction and the traditions of how Japanese spaces operate. But you also said many times that these, these uh, the thatch, the carpentry, the rice paper, these are all things that are being lost. So how do you see, um, I mean, you're a great architect, but you're only one architect. So how do you see... Uh, these traditions being preserved, like is is architecture enough, or what else needs to happen? Mm, yeah, the good, good thing for Japan is the, is those uh, craftsmanship are disappearing, but at the same time, the st still still surviving. N not the not hundred percent of course, but still surviving is, but in in. So, but through the experience in China, so before going to China, so I expected so many good craftsmen were, were surviving. But actually, so the, the situation was very different in China. So it is very difficult to find good craftsmen in China. 
the for um, the some the the product design, so we we can find if we can find in China. But for building constructions, the the China that they, we can't find. And uh, the and then the, I began to think the if the I can the collaborate with Japanese craftsmen the, 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 for the smaller pro small small projects the that they the, can get the, the big motivation to continue to work. But if not, the, they will lose the motivation. It is, the, the motivation is very imp necessary and important for them. And, uh, and uh, the, I the, always the, the, the do the research. The, I, sometimes I'm working with the, as a... As a the not pop, not so famous craftsmen. The famous craftsmen, they are okay. The, without me, the, they can find their their job. Their, but the not famous craftsmen, the, the, but the not famous but still very talented craftsmen, experienced craftsmen, is worth to work with. This is the, our, our the strategy. Thank you. I think it's time to conclude. So, thank you very much again, and uh, we wish you.